Thank you for joining us. It is beautiful Friday. We're here. We're going to talk some photography. We're going to talk street photography. We're going to talk studio on the web, and it's going to be great. So thanks again to Visco for having me. Um, really such an honor to be here. Um, I've been using Visco for like a decade now, and to see studio on the web come to life is just super cool. So yeah, I've been a photographer for around 12 years now. Um, shot on the street kind of intentionally for five, just working on kind of a long-term project of just shooting here in my hometown in Charleston, um, as well as anywhere else I travel. Um, so yeah, a little about me. I, I was first introduced to photography when I was 13 years old around then. Uh, my grandfather put a 35 millimeter camera in my hand and yeah, he kind of taught me the basics and showed me how to load it and use it. And um, I give a lot of credit to him for just inspiring me to document my life. And uh, he was not a professional photographer, but he uh, always had a camera with him, always was photographing everything. He photographed most of his life, just he was in the Air Force, so he documented his travels. And so I want to share a little bit of his work at the beginning. This is actually him, these first uh, three slides. Um, so when he passed in 2018, I inherited his slide archive and his 35 millimeter archive. And so to me, it was really inspiring because I got to see these slides from the 50s to the middle 70s of just his life and uh you know my dad's in a bunch of slides and so seeing that was really cool and he was just a brilliant photographer um and so for me when I see these slides they're kind of just the perfect target on the wall of what I want my editing to look like slide film to me is like perfectly contrasty, perfectly saturated. Uh, you know, the highlights are almost blown out, but not quite. And the shadows are really, really deep and rich. And that's always what I'm trying to achieve with slide, you know, with my digital edits is that like slide film kind of look. Um, and yeah, and to talk about me, I have to give credit to him. So I wanted to share some of his photos um and just how beautiful they are they've got this like kind of timeless look and visco for the longest time you know as long as i've been using them has allowed me to kind of achieve a similar look with my digital files um so this next slide i wanted to share a recent photo um this was uh taken just a few weeks ago but um to me, this is like a great preset to use on a photo like this. When the light's really low and kind of harsh, the shadows are really deep, the highlights are not quite blown out, but pretty strong still. And then once you apl apply that Kodachrome preset, it just, I don't know, to me, gives like a really rich saturation and contrast that I love. Um, so I wanted to share this uh, edit up front, but we'll talk about some more favorite presets of mine. But <clears throat> a big thing of what I want to talk about today is finding our personal vision. To me, kind of honing in on your personal vision is one of the biggest things I think we can do as photographers. Um, you know, especially if you're trying to be a professional photographer, it's kind of our biggest strength is our unique perspective on how we see the world. Um, people don't really pay you to just operate a camera. They pay you because you have a certain way of seeing things and you have a certain way of putting things inside a frame and photographing them. And so when it comes to personal vision, I just think it's something that takes years and years of kind of fine tuning and, and practice and, um, to me, I'm, I feel like I'm just now starting to get to a place where I feel comfortable with 
kind of what I'm looking for when I'm on the street or looking, you know, when I'm shooting stuff for a client, it's taken a long time to get to where I'm at now. And to me, I hope to encourage everyone here that like, you know, only you can make the photographs that you can make. And so refining that and and identifying what things are interesting to you, what subject matter interests you, what kind of style of photography are you interested in? And just leaning into that and and, you know, just really finding that niche and and your unique perspective on the world. Had to had to bring up a quote for uh, of Gary Winogrand. The photographer is responsible for two things once you put your body where you want it to be. And that's what's in the frame and when you snap the shutter. And that's what we do. Like the camera will do the rest. So for me, I can only photograph how I can photograph. And I, you know, and that comes down to what I put inside the frame, how I organize that. And then when I press that shutter, um, and we all will see that differently. One thing, you know, it's, I'm still working on, but it's taken a long time is to listen to that intuition that you have, whether you're on the street or whatever it is, the amount of times where I've listened to my gut and I've made the, made the picture has always paid off. But the moment I hesitate or the moment I think, oh, it's not really that interesting, I usually always regret it. And so for me, listening to your gut and trusting your instincts on like, oh, I think that's interesting. So I'm going to bring the camera up. I'm going to, you know, go out of my way to make that picture. I'm going to, I'm driving down the road and I see something. And every time I've pulled over and gone back and photographed it, it's been worth it. And so continuing to just listen to your gut is such a huge lesson. And I think it's one of those things that just takes years and years to find that trust within yourself. For me, what I've been drawn to while I'm on the street is these kind of quiet, I don't know, solitary moments is probably a good way to describe it and there's just this uh yeah I, i'm just drawn to these really quiet kind of single person in the frame moments that just look like this like calmness to them um and a lot of my pictures or at least subject matter I'm drawn to, it ends up being like that. And um, over the years, I've gotten a good collection of these kind of solitary, single people inside the frame, um, one or two people inside the frame. And yeah, that's kind of been what I've, I end up photographing a lot while I'm on the street. I did want to touch on light and something I've noticed over the past couple of years being able to travel different places is how different light can be in different cities around the world. Like I'm pretty used to the light here in Charleston and I know kind of exactly what that's going to look like every day. But the moment I go to a new city or I, you know, we take a trip to New York, there's something about whether it be just like where you are geographically in the world or that the atmosphere, the humidity, whatever it may be, I've noticed that different light around the world can kind of affect how your images will look. And I think it's important to keep that in mind while editing. Um, I think that can have a real big difference on how I personally edit and just, yeah, being aware of that is something I've I've learned over the years. Okay, I want to talk about my workflow. So typically I'll go out on the street for a few hours and what's great is I'd say most cameras in the past five years 
have some sort of ability to send a raw image or a JPEG image to our phones, like through an app or cord or some, some way. And so uh, my digital camera does that. And so I'm able to go out, shoot for a few hours, grab a coffee, sit down and just kind of take inventory on what did I get that day? Um, and using the Visco mobile app gives me not only a good way to just see it kind of right after taking it, but it allows me to get a good preview of what that final edit will be because the same presets I'm using on the mobile app are the same presets I'm using uh, through the studio on the web. And so being out and being able to like share that JPEG or raw image directly to my phone and tweak that and then get home and then, you know, completely finalize it is so nice. And I feel like if you've got a digital camera made recently, you can kind of do this same workflow um, if you're out shooting on the street. Um, I also want to talk about my commercial workflow, which is pretty similar, but um, the difference with commercial stuff is uh, I'll photograph a lot of events that, you know, they need 10 to 20 images within 12 or 24 hours. And so uh, one thing I'll do is I'll favorite photos during the event, and then I'll send those to my phone and kind of get a good preview. And then I can, you know, take that batch of 15 to 20 and finish those on the on the on the web and then deliver those sneak peeks pretty quickly to a client. Um, so it's a similar workflow to my street, but just more focused on speed and more focused on a, a smaller section of, of photos that I'm delivering for a sneak peek. Best photographs are the ones that ask more questions than they answer. Shout out to Richard Sandler for that quote. Um, I think it's so true. I think sometimes when you don't really know what's happening inside a photograph, kind of makes it all the better. Um, yeah, I, I love Richard Sandler. If you're not familiar with his work, I recently have been watching a, a series on YouTube with Street Photographers, and he has an episode that's just so great. So I recommend that. Um, two of the biggest things. I think when it comes to street photography are content and form. And when I say content, I just mean what's inside the frame that, what, what are you focusing on? What are you, you know, what's your subject matter inside the frame? And then form is just how you place that subject inside the, the photograph and what elements do you include or exclude that make up that photograph. So with content, you know, what I find interesting may not be what you find interesting, but it goes back to, we all have a different perspective of how we see the world. And so again, listening to your intuition of, oh, I find that person interesting or, oh, that seems really funny to me. And that's, you know, whatever it may be trusting your gut on that and photographing things that you find interesting, um, really. And then form. And so form to me is, is tough because you could have a really interesting subject. You could have a really great scene happening in front of you, but if you don't place the camera and yourself and you don't include certain elements, it can kind of really make stuff fall apart pretty quickly. And so form is just such an important part of making a good photograph. And um, to me, you've got to have both content and form for it to be a really great photograph. And there's been so many times where I've been so disappointed because I've missed on a, a great subject because I just framed it poorly. And, you know, there, there's a lot, <laughs> it happens a lot more than it does 
you know, correctly. But yeah, always keep in mind content and form. Cool. Let's move on to some kind of technical stuff. So I use a, a Leica M11 and a 35 millimeter lens. Um, by no means do you have to have this camera, but it's for me the best tool that I've found um, while I'm on the street. It's small, it's lightweight, um, it's all manual focus. So basically, I use a technique called zone focusing to where you set the lens to a predetermined. Uh, distance, your focus distance, and then you shooting at a at a aperture of f8 to f16, somewhere around there. And that allows there to be a larger area that's going to be in focus. Um, and so that combination of things allows you to just manual focus things. And for me, it's a lot quicker than uh, shooting with autofocus. I recently went out um, and I finished a roll of film and was like, okay, well, I want to keep shooting. So I'll use my iPhone. And as, as much as I wanted that to work, it ended up being like such a great and humbling challenge to me because my phone, despite it being pretty new, is still just not that fast compared to what I'm used to with manual focus, where it's just, I don't have to do anything besides set it to a certain distance. And so, yeah, keeping that in mind of like, making sure you have the right tool for the job is always important because it can make things a lot harder than they need to be. So my photos, I shoot mainly from the, the hip, which just means I don't bring the camera fully up to my eye. Um, a lot of times I'm, kind of walking and people are passing me. And so a lot of times I just don't have time to uh, even bring the camera up that high. Um, so with kind of presetting my focus distance, I can, you know, I've gotten, it's taken a long time to get to where I am just because it's just takes a lot of practice. But um, yeah, I usually just shoot from the, from the hip and just, you know, kind of around chest level. Again, most of my photos are made in passing. Like, I feel like there's two camps. Some some people like to sit on a corner and, uh, you know, wait for things to come in and out of out of frame. Um, I get really bored and I can't really do that. And so I just like keep moving. Always want to see kind of new people coming and going. Um, while I'm out. So I rarely uh, sit in one spot. I just want to pop in here because we were talking, Ryan, in our conversations that we had. Yeah. How you said you feel like um, when you stand still or you're not moving that you kind of stand out because you're on the taller side and things like <laughs> that. So I thought that was kind of interesting. And then I was like, oh, when as you <clears throat> keep moving in the crowd, you just become a part of the scene. Yeah. Of people, and I feel like that maybe is a factor that helps you kind of just blend in and take those photographs without people really like singling absolutely. you out, seeing the camera sort of thing. So absolutely. Yeah. Like when I have camped on a, a corner or something, people like pretty quickly, it, I don't know, spot you, um, even if you're not being obvious. So I wanted to chat if, a little bit about some of my favorite presets that I've I've used over the years with, with Visco. Um, I never want my edits to be super stock, like super trendy or anything. Like I just want them to be really timeless. And, you know, 20 years from now, I want those edits to be just good and just kind of enhance the photo um, and what the camera saw. Um, Luckily, Visco presets allow me to, to do that pretty easily. Um, so this is uh, before and after um, using the KP1, the Kodak Portra preset that I really, really love. Um, I shoot a lot of film as well as digital. And so 
I'm typically shooting portrait 160, 400, or 800. And so I just naturally gravitate towards those presets because it just really gives me the same cohesive look through my film stuff and my digital stuff. So one thing to note, I don't really do a ton with my editing. I'm usually just fixing uh, exposure. Um, I usually underexpose a little bit just because with digital stuff, it's easier to kind of bring those uh, shadows and midtones back than it is to kind of save those highlights. So typically I'll just bump up my exposure a little bit, add some contrast, and then depending on kind of how contrasty the photo is, like this one in particular is, you know, really backlit. Um, so I bump down the strength a little bit so it's not as uh, strong. Um, this one, again, a little underexposed, but this is the KP3 that I, I would probably say this is my favorite preset, the uh, 160 um, VC preset. Again, pretty pretty simple edit, but as you can see, you know, it makes a big difference. Um, I'll just go to this next one. You can see, again, just back down the uh, strength. This was a little bit more underexposed than the, than the last one, and so I brought that up a good bit. And then usually fixing temperature or warming it up a little bit, kind of stuff like that. Um, but yeah, like I was saying, Visco has allowed me to kind of match my film stuff with my digital stuff. And it just, now with Studio on the Web, I can do this on a much bigger screen because I almost always prefer to edit photos on a larger screen and it just allows me to just dial it in a lot easier than you know using it on my phone but um yeah again thank you for to visco for letting me show some work um yeah Yay. <laughs> Awesome. Well, that was wonderful. Thank you, Ryan. Um, I could not ask for anything better. This was just great.